So you've been studying the way electricity moves. Charged particles move and then they interact with a field. As a matter of fact, you can use your right hand. If you point your fingers towards the field and you show where the electricity or the, the charge, especially positive charge or current, is moving with your thumb, then your palm will point to the way the force is, that, that electric charge is feeling a force and will want to turn um, or feel a force to be pushed or pulled into the magnetism. So how do we use that, that magnetism on electricity? Well, one way we can do it is in a motor. Um, a motor might be a place that has a loop that you push electricity in, and that electricity creates a north and a south pole. Ideally, it's going to create a south pole where it's next to a fixed magnet where it is a south pole, and the north next to the north, so they'll be repelled, and that'll start this device to turn. The trouble is, is that once it flips, now it's going to be attracted and it will stay there. The key is that they cut this ring and they let it rotate and the electricity is just going through. So as this turns, you'll pass from one of these sides to the other and that'll switch the current just the time when they are coming to the side they are attracted to. They'll switch and then become a repelled side so that this side of the loop will again become the south pole and it'll be repelled away and it'll flip another turn and another turn. But the key was cutting this. They've even got it down to where they'll have four or six or eight of these loops you know, each one just oriented a little bit different from each other. Um, and then every one of those loops becomes, you know, the, the, the electricity goes through it for a bit of time and it just, it advances it further and further. But each one of those loops creates a power. Um, the best power is right here in the middle of the magnet where it's getting fully repelled from it. And so if you put three or four or five loops in there, you get a nice even amount of power from an electric uh, motor. The videos are going to be great in terms of explaining that better. Um, if you do the reverse and you actually crank the... Um, crank that uh, that loop as this comes through. You don't have to move the charge so it'll feel the you know the push. I mean, any charge that sits there doesn't feel the magnetism at all. But if you move the wire or you move the charges through the magnetic field, they'll feel the push. You don't have to make the current move. You're moving the wire by <laughs> moving the electricity that way, and then it will feel a push of which then that'll start pushing the electricity through, which we call electricity. We're going to plug those into our devices. That's going to do work. An interesting and innovative way that people are using induction. Induction is, is using that um, electricity in a loop, for instance, uh, to create a strong magnetic field. Well, that magnetic field will drive probably some neighboring area to set up um, some electrons flowing as well and creating the opposite magnet. And those two will hit each other and they'll, for instance, levitate. And if you watch this little mitten, uh, video, it'll talk about Elon Musk's attempt to get the super train to go from L.A. up to... Um, San Francisco, one of the ways he's going to do that is he's going to create um, a set of uh, super magnets that go underneath the train to lift it, and they got a special formation for it. I think it was called Hallback Formation, where almost all the magnetism gets focused downwards. Um, and the way that moves, the, the movement of the, the train itself will induce another set of charges to move on the, the, the surface below them, and that moving charge creates a magnetic force which pushes up. So those two and that the faster it moves, the more magnetism it creates, and it lifts that up to make no friction between the surface. Of course, they're going to put it in a tube and take air resistance out. And then the last thing is they'll use that same inductive force on the sides so that as it passes by um, some other magnets on the side, it induces more magnetism on the side, which becomes the opposite side magnet, and it ends up becoming a north charge and keeps on pushing it and pushing it. Today they use that inductive charge to throw things out, like in a, an amusement park ride. They see that starts on the ground, and all of a sudden it gets this huge boost, goes through a couple loops, and then usually goes straight up in the air, and then comes back down through the loops. And that's an induction um, acceleration. The last application of, of uh, magnetism that we use all the time is that, let's say on the countryside you get the power that's generated from coal or oil or wherever, sun, uh, sun energy or wind energy. And that's being generated out far away from the city. The trouble with sending all that electricity by flowing through the wires is those electrons bump into the metal and those metals start vibrating and that's heat and we lose that energy. So if this is, for instance, on this side is the, the power generation side and they create a bunch of electrons moving because of these generators, what we want to do is not send the electrons, but we want to get the, the electrons voltage to go really high, half a million uh, volts. So they'll send the, the locally generated electrons into a transformer, and it'll go around a bunch of loops in this, in this iron coil. And what that does is the iron coil keeps the magnetism contained in that area. That magnetism will be then focused to go around that circle. And if this has like 10 coils on it, that same magnetism will go through this side, which has 20 coils on this side, just as an example. And those two sections will both feel that same magnetic charge and create 
um, the electrons to have a greater push because both segments create the same charge as what it had on this side. So you've effectively doubled the push or doubled the voltage to send down the wire. Well, you do that a number of times, and you can get from you know the generated uh, voltages, uh, maybe as thousands of volts or something, to maybe hundred thousand or even a half a million volts. And that push is sent to the long distance wires to the city, and the city does the reverse process. That comes in and goes around about ten or twenty or ten thousand coils. And the other side has far fewer. Let's say ten thousand maybe 100 coils. So those 10,000 coils end up just moving the electrons much faster. Um, it'll pull more electrons through, but it'll be at a lower voltage that gets delivered to your house and then you can use it safely. Every plug that you have from a computer to another toy, that, that big boxy thing in there is a transformer to take higher 120 volt into lower volt kinds of charge. And that's what you use then to transfer um, high voltage energy and not many electrons to more electrons flowing and doing the work that you need, but at lower voltage. So, great practical things. Keep working on your assignment. I'll work some problems out in terms of a video and you can use that to, to help.